The Geneva Center for Security Policy welcomed Dr. Mohamed El Baradai, 2005 Nobel Peace Prize laureate and the Director General Emeritus of the International Atomic Energy Agency. He shares with us his insights on current issues facing international peace and security, nuclear non-proliferation, and advice to the next generation on how to face these complexities. Join us in our studio for a one-on-one -on -one discussion with him. Well, I think we are in a very critical time, critical period in our history, because we have the old system, which is with the creation after the Second World War, is pretty much gone, and we do not have yet a new system in its place. So we are going through a transition. We don't. We haven't yet agreed on even the outline of the new of the new system, and that's a dangerous situation. It's a situation full of confusion, full of angst, full of, uh, full of uncertainty. And the, the sooner we get to agree on how the new system that fits, you know, the, a new reality, globalized world, you know, the different role of technology in our world, the sooner we get into a new system of governance at the national level, at the international level, the better for all of us. Right now, we have to cross our fingers that something doesn't go wrong in this period of confusion. I think this is a real danger we are facing, the nuclear threat. We continue to live in a world uh, marred or tainted by the existence of nuclear weapons. We have 2,000 nuclear weapons on alert, which means that they are ready to be promptly launched, as they call it, which means that the US president or the Russian president will have seven to eight minutes to respond to a reported nuclear attack, which could be miscalculation, which could be computer error. So we live in a, in a very precarious situation when a nuclear weapon could be launched. And if we have nuclear weapon launched well, how the impact of this, how the other party would react, we'd go into a nuclear war. We understand, of course, the impact of nuclear war. That is self-destruction, basically, of the whole, or at least a good chunk of our world. We have to move beyond this system of nuclear deterrence, which was a brainchild of the Second World War of the 40s. We are now in the 21st century, and we, we need to figure out a better system of security that is more inclusive, that is equitable, that does not depend on nuclear weapons. De depending on nuclear weapons is, is, a, is a doctrine that is not sustainable, that is dangerous, uh, that is not you know, immune from human fallibility. And of course, terrorism, extremists, how long would it take them before they get their hand on a nuclear weapon. And if they do, well, if they do, they will simply use it. I mean, they have no return address. They're, they're, they're not, they don't have a deterrence in their mind. Everybody agrees that this is not what we should have. Everybody who is at the heart of Cold War, everybody you know, has experience, and yet we are not yet able to move. And I was saying here at the center, that the work, the work is cut for you, that you really, we talk, we complain, but we need creative ideas. You know, what is the alternative in our security system? You know, that a security system that is, does not depend on nuclear weapons. What is the, how do we get out of poverty? You know, why do we have two million people live under the poverty level today? Which is unconscionable, unacceptable, because we have enough resources to feed everybody. So, the, how we can use the t technology, the new technology, to get us together, you know, the togetherness, rather than keep us apart. Right now, we live like in a tribal system. If you are not from my tribe, I don't really care very much about whether you die in the Mediterranean drowning or you, you get shot in Afghanistan. What we need to understand in this kind of world, new 
reality we have, uh, we are all going to succeed together or we are all going to fail one after the other. The, the idea that some of us will succeed and the other will fail is not, is not at all true. It, it, it is not a zero-sum game. So we change our mindset. And your center here is, is uniquely qualified to come with new ideas, creativity, because the, the most important to me is to get people to change their mindset, to understand that we are one human race, we need to support each other, we need to work with each other, we need to help each other, irrespective of all, I would say, the superficial differences of religion, color, language. I mean, these are all superficial differences that at the end of the day, at the core, doesn't really make any difference. We are all share one thing, humanity. And I hope this is where we, this is our salvation, to my mind, to feel human and to share that sense of humanity with every individual on the face of the earth. To move out of the current system. Uh, the younger generation are the hope, frankly. The younger, to me, the younger generation is the future. I have a lot of hope in the younger generation. They think differently, they have different culture, their music is different, their way of interacting is different. They don't see these horrible barriers between us, color, language, race, what have you. I have a lot of faith when I see my children or even better, my grandchildren. They are color blind, they are race blind, they are religion blind. They know each other as friends, as people. They speak in different way. They don't think of ever of going, killing each other. They, they believe that there is nothing that I kill for. You know, I fight for values, but I will never go out of my way to kill somebody. So the concept of war, the concept of violence is not in their mind. But they feel they are being marginalized. They feel that they are not being listened to. And I think the time for them now is to organize and tell the young, older generation, thank you and goodbye. <laughs> we, we, haven't, we haven't really done very much to them. Maybe we have done as much as we can, but we need a different thinking, we need a different culture, we need a different, different human interaction. And I think that is the younger generation to me. I, again, I always tell the story of my seven-year-old granddaughter whom I took her to the park and I told her, she asked me a question. I gave her an evasive answer because I didn't know really the answer. And she stopped in the middle of the park and she looked at my eyes with full confidence. And she said, I want an answer right now. And at that moment I realized it's time for them to take over.